Hello. Um, I made three videos so far documenting, not really documenting how I made my Farnsworth, but kind of showing little uh, updates of how far I've come doing it. Uh, I realize there's people that are still needing help making some, and my way is no, by no means the official way to do it. I just, uh, I faked my way through the whole thing and it turned out pretty good. So I didn't even think of making a how-to as long the way, you know? So, uh, I thought I'd just, I'm not going to take it apart completely because it did take forever to put together, but um, I'm going to take it apart as most I can and at least show you what I did, uh, things that I did, things that I learned and did that worked or whatever. Um, first of all, faceplate. Here's all the pieces that you need. You need to get a faceplate, uh, I mean, uh, the actual faceplate, the brass, uh, I had made by someone on uh, Replica Prop Forms. It was really, like, in the beginning of the series, someone had done an order of, I only think, 16. So, they did a couple runs. Mine was uh, the second of them, being that the uh, buttons hole that they cut through it was a little bit bigger. Uh, the button I used, I had to dremel it down a little bit more to make the opening bigger. But, uh, the so far, the button is the only thing that's not really exact, because it, uh, it needs a washer that doesn't have the ridges on it, like that one. But uh, you get the red light, and most of these are posted, the links are posted on uh, Replica Prop Forms where to get them. But you need the red light, um, the button, and these two knobs. The only thing is this center knob, if you look at it, I did dremel down the side. I don't know if uh, you could see that, but it was like this one. It had a flat uh, bottom. So basically I just had to dremel down the side and then paint that brown with this. Uh, this one I just put in, and the way I attach them in... I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. And the jewel. You need the jewel to glue that on. Uh, the way I attach them... The, by the way, this is very ghetto rigged, you can tell. Uh, I got a piece of... I think I have it still. Maybe I don't. Oh, right here. Um, I went down to Home Depot and took the buttons, and I got a piece of uh, threaded rod. It basically, it's just like a big screw base. Uh... And I hacksawed the first one off, but then I realized, well, why am I wasting my energy? I can just dremel it. So I found one that actually fit into the knobs, bought it, and cut it down to size. Uh, then I put them through, and basically each uh, knob has, you can see, a little teeny screw on the inside. So when you put the rod in, you tighten that screw and it clamps down on it. Um, I... Wanted a, I didn't want it to scuff up, so I didn't get a regular washer. If you can see, I know it's... I'm sorry. I just don't want to take all the tape apart. Uh, I put a little ring of felt. I just cut out felt. And uh, so the felt is what's rubbing against it. It's adhesive felt, so the felt is actually glued to the nut. So when you turn the knob in the front, the felt will slot, like rotate on the back with the nut, so it won't unscrew itself. Uh, I did that for both the buttons after I, you know, dremeled that down and painted it. Uh, then the one thing that was, like, the trickiest for me is doing the circuit board, which this is the, all the back of, um, but it's taped in place. But in my earlier videos, you could see what it looked like. Uh, the only thing I did different with that is I soldered off the existing LED that was on there, and I got one, which I think I actually... It comes with two, so you can see what it looked like. Um, I... Sorry, this is going to video is going to get people seasick. Um, I soldered that one off and I got down at Radio Shack uh, this size. It is a 10 millimeter LED and uh, I soldered that in place and the good thing is it has really long uh, wire connectors so I could stretch it from the back where it was and stretch it down to actually go. I taped it over it right there. You can see where my thumb is. I taped it into where the indicator light is on this side, so when you press it, it goes to that light. Um, I really just, I mean, I just faked most of this. I glued it together, I taped it together. That's why it's not pretty. It's kind of ugly. But uh, I really wanted the front button to actually be what turns it on. So I didn't want to have to, like, take the faceplate off each time I wanted to turn it on. Um, but the thing is, with this button I got, it was too big. It would not fit in the Wheatley case and still close. So, I, uh, took the back piece completely off, uh, and then I got the existing button that comes with the sound module, which you can find the link to on, 
replica prop forms. I took it apart, and if you could see, I just uh, hot glued it. That's the existing circuit board. Uh, the silver metal on the side is the button, and I put them the proper distance apart and uh, taped them together, and then hot glued one side and then did the other side so they stayed the perfect distance apart. So when the button's depressed, it pushes the circuit board's button. Um, other than that, I just uh, put the faceplate in. I had to Dremel it down all the way around it because it was too it was bigger than the faceplate was. I Dremeled the whole length of it down and then Dremeled the little holes in it for the brads, which I got at Home Depot. Um, that is what you'll need. They're only like two bucks. Um, what I did with that is I also dremeled down the length of them. This, there's there's tape over it because I wanted to make I hot glued them in and taped them in. I didn't want them coming out at all because when the face plate's in, if the face plate is pushed in and these don't stay attached to the faceplate, they'll pop out in the front, which happened. Um, so I dremeled the holes in it so they fit through. I cut them to the exact length so they, when they went in the case, they didn't sink in anymore and they're exactly where I want them. Um, spray painted the back of the lens. Uh, you take the module, you put it on your computer. Uh, you can find the Farnsworth sound online. So I did that and put it on it and I set it to the loop so it'll continually loop and of course I set it to push the button on and then push it again to turn it off. Um, other than that, I did some felt spacers, which is what you're seeing right here, this white piece. Because uh, I wanted the button to only stick out that much before it was sticking out a lot. So I put that in so it takes up some of the room. These little uh, things I just got, uh, adhesive. I went to Michael's and got uh, some... Uh, adhesive foam. They're really thin, so it actually ended up working out better because I got to the exact height. I just lined it up by eye and uh, got the exact height of the brads to match the height of the foam. So it didn't, because for a while it was sinking in at the bottom of the thing. When I pushed the button, it would push it into the case too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can find all these online. The only thing that I'm not too sure about in some images the crystal is very clear, and in some in images it has uh, kind of like air bubbles in it. Um, I just went ahead and got the clear one and hot glued it on. The, that was kind of tricky because I had to, um, since it is clear, you can see the hot glue behind it. So I had to put it on about five times and pop it off each time that the glue was uneven or like pushed out past the side, and I actually hurt my finger doing that and myself bleed. But it looks good. Um... Just, uh, the back of the circuit board is sticky, but it doesn't actually even touch the back of the Wheatley case. So, um, I just taped it in place because it has to... The speaker's right here, the circuit board's right here, and if the speaker went over the buttons, it made it stick out of the case too much. So it was kind of weird to finagle it and get it to exactly that, and it, when it was in there, I didn't want it to rattle around, so that's why I taped it, like, like get a rigged, like I said. Um... I put some of the adhesive black foam behind, uh, so you have the little black strip and the speaker is black, so you don't see any of the ugliness behind it. Um, I did. I wanted. I wanted to weather it more, but I didn't actually go ahead and do it. I think like, I, I like it kind of looking a little new. Um, you can weather it by. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do. Uh, putting it, suspending it in like a Tupperware or something and have ammonia sitting at the bottom and the ammonia fumes get to it. You can paint vinegar and salt on it or soak it in vinegar and salt. You can do a bunch of different things and you can find online how to weather brass. Um, the only thing I didn't wasn't too happy with is the fact that the Farnsworth and the numbers uh, blended in a lot. It didn't you they didn't stand out. Um, I still kinda wanna make them a little darker but I went ahead and got uh, some wood stain and a little bit of brown paint and painted it into each letter and uh, number and then just wiped it off the cover so it'll it stands out enough now like when you it, it's hard to see because it's shiny but it does stand out a lot um and with that I mean that's the whole faceplate and that's the whole sound and everything the only thing that uh I see I have an extra lens in here I have enough to almost make two of them so we have more stuff in the mail but uh, other than that, 
this is actually a Wheatley uh, fly fishing box. A lot of the products, or um, props rather, on uh, Warehouse 13 have to do with fishing stuff. Like the Tesla is uh, part of a fishing reel, which I actually got a bunch of. And um, it's just a Wheatley case. The only thing was, we had to order this from like the UK, so shipping was, yeah. Um, but it is the exact dimensions cut um, th that the person cut from the case for me. I'm sorry, I can't remember their other ones' names that, that, that I bought it from, but uh, they, they can help you out there. Um, the only thing I did is it comes, it comes uh, this color, brass, brassy gold. Um, you paint the outside. I painted it with, and it's, it's the same color I used for the butt, and I wasn't sure how it's going to work because it was plastic paint, but it actually held up really good. Um, so I sprayed that on, and then I sprayed it in lighter and lighter layers, so it had kind of a texture to it. See how it's not quite shiny, it's kind of textured. Um, and then I went over it with still wool a lot, and, uh, scuffed it up, and then did that between each layer, so there's a couple layers of scuffs in it, not just ones that go down to the base color. Um, so I did that, and then I went over it, where is this, with... Some of my clear wood finish I had left over from when I built that book DVD rack behind me. Um, and I did that, like I said, like in really light sprays so it has more of a textured look. Uh, the inside door is the same color as the outside. Um, the only thing that's kind of hard is the fact that uh, the thing is painted when it's closed because the inside lip has that brass uh, lip to it. So that was easy enough, but when I had to paint this, I had to be careful and uh, tape off the inside so it didn't get that little teeny lip. I uh, spray painted it all, so I taped over that. Um, I think that's, I mean, mainly it. It's just, a lot of it, there is no exact way to do it because depending on what sound module you got or, uh, like, the button I got is different than some other people's. Um, so it was a little too long to fit in the box, or tall, rather. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're all a little unique. If you look on the show, they're all a little different. Um, but, I mean, that's kind of the cool part. You can make it the way you want it. Uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know what else to say. That That's pretty much it. You just got to fiddle with it and put it all together. So a lot of this, like, you can get um, a lot of the, you know, brads and stuff like that you just get at Home Depot. You go, um, the felt sheet I got at Home Depot too, but you, a lot of it you can get at Michael's as well. But the only thing that, that was perfect, I mean, this is like it was made for it, these little brads. They fit in perfectly and they look really good. Um, other than that, a lot of these things, unfortunately, you do have to buy in, like, insane bulk. You have to buy in almost, at minimum of a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, I'm sorry, minimum of at least a hundred pieces. Uh, each order, but my mom is apparently really good at looking online, so she went ahead and got all these things for me. Um, this we couldn't find in orders. Any the the indicator light we couldn't find in orders less than I think it was I think it was a hundred pieces. But she found a company that was really cool, and they will sample out pieces to you sometimes. So if you get a hold of them and just say I want one or two to see what they're like, the lady was really cool and sent us two of them for free. Uh, I'm not saying that'll always happen, but. You can also find people who are working on their Farnsworth, and sometimes if they had to do a big order, they'll either for free ship it out just to be nice, like paying it forward, or they'll just charge you shipping usually, because no one really needs a hundred of these little lights. But other than that, I mean, just hot glue the heck out of it. The the, the lens is hot glued in there, and the brads are hot glued behind it and then taped. Um, hot glued the foam pieces on, the lights hot glued on, and then seriously, I just masking taped it all together and the cool part about this I it was a little too big for the Wheatley case mostly just at the bottom the curvature but if you look I seriously just put it in place and through manhandling it get it to sink down in there and it's not incredibly easy so I'm probably gonna have to do two hands with it but then that also means it will not come out I had to like before I did this video yank on this thing to get it out but it's not impossible to come out either because if you want to replace the batteries and the sound piece, it's going to be really easy. And dang it! Hang on, let me try and get this on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. See, so now it sinks in with the brads. It sinks in. Sorry, I can't see. 
exactly that much that I want and with the foam spacers it doesn't go in any farther than this and it's the perfect height to close it up and you have your farm door. I hope that helps someone. I hope I've been babbling for 15 minutes, but I have. Uh, tools you will need, you will need a Dremel, and you're going to need a good one, because I had a crappy one, and it was not worth it. And get a good, like, invest in a good case. This one was, like, 60 bucks, and it came with tons of pieces. It came with all the tools that you're going to need. Um, the brads you're going to need. You're going to need paint. You're going to need some brown paint. You're going to need uh, gray paint if you want to paint the back of the screen. You're going to need a clear coat, like I had. You're just going to need a lot of, a lot of still wool to scratch it up. Um, soldering, if you want to take pieces apart, oops, you're going to need a soldering iron. Uh, hot glue guns are your friend. Use them all the time. Um, this works wonders, the buttons. I hadn't have any problems with them. That was, like, the easiest part. I mean, not the buttons, the knobs. Why do I keep confusing those? Um, just marker. I used a marker to mark exactly where I wanted the holes drilled in it. These are all pretty basic things, though. Um, I used... Actually, my sculpting tools to keep popping that center jewel off each time I glued it on wrong. Um, pliers, tape. Uh, I used <laughs> flux braid to pull out some of the solder I messed up. But uh, oh, here's my felt thing. God Lord, I'm kicking everything. And you know, felt adhesive felt. Other than that, you can see my creepy room now. There's a parrot back there. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's about it, and I hope this helped, so please sh let me see yours, hey -o. I want to see what other people are making and how they're doing it, because I want to work on another one, and I mean, it's, what's the fun in making an exact duplicate? It might be fun to make different changes to it, so whatever you come up with, please post me a video, because I want to see. Oh, paintbrushes, that's too. Alright, thank you very much, and I hope this helped.